What's up beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. Have you ever taken a photograph that you think is amazing but then you get home and you preview your photo and you see that one half of the photo is very underexposed and the other half of the photo is very overexposed. Now one way to counteract this problem would have been to use exposure bracketing to take the photo. That's a method where you take three photos, one underexposed, one well exposed and one overexposed and then combine them post-processing. But if you didn't do that at the time when you took the photo, you get home, you've got a half overexposed, half underexposed photo. What do you do? How do you fix it? So in today's video, I'm going to take a photo that's half underexposed, half overexposed and try to fix it using Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4. Now I've got a lot of other videos about Canon's DPP4. I will put a link to the playlist down below in this video. So if this interests you, go check them out. So without further ado, let's begin. Right, so today we're going to be looking at a photo that's really underexposed in half of the photo and overexposed in the other half of the photo and we're going to try and correct it to the best of our abilities using Canon's DPP-4. So firstly I'm going to click on the photo I want to use and I've got a very good example here of a photo that I've taken in one of the parks around here and as you can see the bottom half or this little bridge is really dark compared to the top half where it's got the sky which is really bright. So now we're going to try and balance this photo out and first thing you might think is just adjust the brightness. So here on the right hand side if I adjust the brightness you can see it does increase the bottom half a little bit. This is how ideally we would like to see it but then the top half gets extremely overexposed so we can't really do that so we're going to have to figure out what the best way is to fix just this part of the photo. So the first place I would start is on this perform basic image adjustments tab. Scroll all the way down until you get the advanced settings over here. There's these two areas called shadow and highlights. So the shadow part affects everything that's really dark. The highlights part affects everything that's really bright. So let's try and increase the shadow part as much as we can. And as you can see that did work and it did bring it up a little bit even though it's the most we can go but it also wherever there was black in the plants and trees and wherever there was a tint of black it also increased that so let's try bring the highlights down now because it was way too bright now that looks a little bit better we took the highlights all the way down as much as we can but there's still a big difference this is still in my opinion underexposed so the second place we can try and fix this issue is over here there's the adjust image tone curve so let's go ahead and click on it and then in here we want to select the luminance so luminance is to do with the light or the brightness we're going to select that and this is a histogram the only thing that you really need to remember about a histogram is this graph here represents the colors in your photo so on the left hand side is all the dark colors or the black colors in the middle is all the midtones, and on the right hand side is your highlights or your light colors so we want to bring up the dark colors so what we want to do is just click somewhere on this line we want to separate the dark colors from the rest so i'm just going to do like two dots here so these are our anchor points and what i'll do is i'll grab this line and move it slightly up a little bit and as you can see what that's doing is it's decreasing the black colors making them lighter so by moving this up this graph went down a little bit and as you can see we did get some of the brightness back now if I had to push this a bit more to see how far we can go you can see it is doing its job but it is kind of giving this a bit of a washed out feeling in my opinion so it's starting to look a bit washed out and the colors are okay we might want to maybe bring the highlights down a little bit and maybe the midtones down a little bit so that kind of works not the best way because it does make the photo look a little bit washed out so I'm just going to undo all that and let's try only bring the dark colors up a little bit to brighten it up like that and then the mid colors I just want to push them back to how they were so there we go it did improve it a little bit but still not as much as I would like it to improve so the last and final thing I can think of doing to improve this is jumping into this adjust specific areas tab so let me go ahead and click on that and give it time to load now you'll see this little circle spinning it does take quite some time to load depending on the size of your photograph we are working with raw files which can be quite large and my computer has got 32 gigs of 
memory of RAM, just in case you're interested. I do have an i7 gaming laptop that I'm working on and it still takes a long time to load. I think that's one of these limitations of Canon's DPP4. It's not the fastest software when it comes to loading really large photos. All right, now that the photo has loaded, what I want to do is click the set adjustment area button and that will give us this little circle with a crosshair in it and that will allow us to select specific areas in the photo and then we'll be able to adjust the settings of just those specific parts. So first thing I want to do is take the brightness down all the way to minus 100. What that does is once we select a part of the photo, it will go almost black. And that's the way in Canon's DPP4 that we can tell what we've selected. So to show you how that works, I'm just going to maybe make my brush size the biggest it can go. My radius is okay. Radius is the second circle. There's two circles. So you've got the smaller circle in the inside and then the outer circle, that's the blur radius. So it's kind of like a buffer zone between what we select and what we don't select. It smooths over the selection. Basically, that's the best way I can think of to describe it. So having said that, I'm going to start selecting all the parts which I think are too dark over here, which I want to brighten up. So I'm going to start by just clicking as you can see it went completely black and that is because our brightness is all the way down don't worry about that we'll increase the brightness and fix it a little bit later so for now we just want to select all the dark parts what we think might need a little bit more brightness and I can adjust my brush size to kind of fit in these pieces that we want to include but we don't want to select the bright parts so we just want to be a bit cautious not to select the highlights because they're bright enough already so as you can see over here I'll just leave the grass and that piece of water that's already highlighted and then I can go ahead and kind of just touch it up I can decrease this something like that maybe this part over here as well let's just decrease the brush size a bit there we go. And also we might want to do this part at the back here as well, because as you can see, that is a bit underexposed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this part at the back. There we go. I think that's enough of the selection. So we've kind of selected all the parts that were underexposed. And what I'm going to do now is I'll bring the brightness back up to zero. So let's see what it originally looks like. So one, zero, something like that. There we go. And now I'm going to play with the brightness until I get the brightness that I want. So if I increase this to 19, it's already looking much better. Let's see how far we can push it. If I go to 64, that's way too much. If I go back down to 35, that looks more or less correct. And as you can see here, some parts we can see that we've missed out a few places. So we can just kind of touch up where we want to. Even this part at the back here, just to kind of get it matching to the rest of it. So we can keep adding to our selection all the parts that we've missed out. All right, and that looks kind of decent, but now you can see because we increased the brightness quite a bit, I can actually probably push this till about 39, 40. There we go, that looks nice and bright now. We can even fix up this rock wherever we missed parts. So now you can see it looks nice and visible, but it does look a little bit still washed out. So to correct that, I'm going to increase the contrast. And these adjustments here will only apply to what we've selected, so it won't affect the rest of my photo. So if I increase the contrast, you can see it kind of gets it sharp back a little bit it looks more natural than how it was looking when it was washed out let's see if we can push it a bit higher there we go that still looks good in my opinion so there we go we've used three different tabs to correct the shadows to get it matching to the rest of the photo and now this kind of became a usable photo so now what I would normally do is go back to the perform basic image adjustments and from here I could then start editing my normal things like my color saturation I could increase that a little bit and play around with the rest of the settings things. Uh, I've got a lot of videos on Canon's DPP4, so go check them out. They explain how to use the rest of the tabs. Now, just to see the before and after, how the photo was and how we got it looking. There we go. We've got a before on the left-hand side and after on the right-hand side. And as you can see, it's a massive difference. The photo is now usable. And that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial taught you something and I hope it helps you out. If you did like this video, do give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to this channel. I'll be making a lot more content in the future. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care and goodbye.